Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. So we're moving onwards and ever upwards with the 9.0.1 micro changes, balance changes, whatever one you, whatever you want to call it. And in this video, we're going to look at this little beastie, the IS4. Now, I've always liked the IS4. It's always been very noob friendly and a staple heavy there in tier 10. However, it did get a slight nerf, mainly because it was being spammed in tournaments. And that sort of knocked it off its little perch, only very slightly, however. But with the recent micro patch balance change, small update, whatever you wish to call it, it's had some of its glory given back to it. So what changes have Wargaming actually done? So here we have a look at those. The engine power has been decreased by 50 horsepower. <gasps> That's a nerve. The dispersion on the turret traverse will be increased by 0.02. That's also a nerve. The armor thickness in the driver's cabin, however, will be increased by 40 millimeters. That is quite a big buff because that driver's cabin was always a weak spot that every top player aimed for. The armor thickness in the lower slope of the hull side will also be increased by 50 mil. That again is a buff and pretty, pretty significant, funnily enough. And the vehicle durability, that's its hit points, will be increased by 150. So it seems that Wargaming haven't really given back what it took away, but it has given back quite a few bits and bobs. Looking at its overall survivability, well, it's now got 2,809 hit points. That's good. Wargaming did shave some hit points off it, and now it's had those, well, it's not had all of them back, but it's had some of them back. And obviously, if you stick on the various equipment, that will increase. Main armor, well, you can see there the turret frontally is still stonking, 238. The sides, 190. They've always been pretty thin, and the rear, 162. Moving to the hull, frontally 160, but it's sloped, so that's a bit of a misnomer. I mean, 160 on the front with sloped armour. If you angle it properly and you wiggle it and jiggle it, you will get those bounces. On the sides, 140. Again, it's a bit of a misnomer because you can get some decent bounces off it. And the rear has always been very thin, what with 100. View range is 279, which for a big lumbering heavy isn't too bad. And you can see there that the camo and concealment is pretty normal for a heavy. But what about its gun? Well, DPM is 2,603. Not bad for a big heavy. Reload time is just shy of 10 seconds at 9.68. Again, that's not too bad considering this thing dishes out 420 iron alpha on its standard ammunition. Penetration is pretty nice. 258 for its normal standard ammunition, 340 for its heat, and 68 for its HE. Damage, as I said, 420 is your AR and Alpha for your standard ammunition, 360 for your heat, and 500 for your HE. Again, not too shabby. Aiming time, well, we looked at the 215B yesterday, and the aim time on that is like two odd seconds. Here it's 5.1, so it is pretty lengthy. And to be honest with you, the IS-4 has always struggled with its gun accuracy. And as you can see there, the dispersion is 0 0.349, which is quite a lot. And remember, dispersion is that reticle, how far the shell travels within it. So it's still not a highly accurate tank, but I'm still liking it. So what loadout have I got on this thing? Well, all the replays you're gonna see is with the equipment loadout that I've got here. And what I'm using at the moment, I'm using the gun rammer. Why? Because it just reduces that reload time and increases that DPM. So the DPM is now 2,603, and the reload time is coming down. I prefer that to the calibrated shells at the moment, I'm still experimenting. I mean, the calibrated shells is nice. I mean, it does sometimes struggle with its penetration, but I've been finding that, you know, with that reload time, it's just a little bit nicer. This is for you to chop and change. I'm doing it because I'm experimenting and I want to get my accuracy up and I'm trying to get better at penetrating tanks. I'm then rolling out with the defense system. Why? Well, I don't want the crew injury and I don't want the ammo rack explosion, not that this suffers from ammo racks. And then using the improved optics just to increase that view range. 
I've then actually got a supercharger loaded at the moment because I want to actually penetrate at distance. Again, I'm just experimenting. Normally I would have the enhanced gun laying device that reduces the aim time, but at the moment I'm running it with a supercharger. Then I've got the improved assembly, increasing my hit points to by 159. I'm then running the improved control, just gives me some additional turn rate. There's no point in me running the engine accelerator, only get a little bit of average speed. I'm then using the vertical stabilizer that uh, and helps with my aim time, and then I've just got the toolbox and the eye end consumables. My ammunition loadout, as you can see, I've got a majority of standard ammunition, 20, I've got 15 heat and 5 HE. Provisions, while well, I'm running the extra combat rations, I'm then running the protective kit, and I'm then running the improved fuel. And when I come to the consumables, obviously I've got two repair kits and the adrenaline. So that's basically what I'm running on this tank at this moment in time, just for an experimentation. Not saying you've got to run that, but for me it's kind of working and we'll see that in some of the replays so what is it about the is4 well basically as i said it's always been the most noob friendly of all the heavies in tier 10 and it kind of lost that to the is7 but i personally think it's back and it's back with a plum i'm liking the is4 i spammed it all day yesterday in uh, in my streams and I, I think I walked away with something like a 74% win rate after, I don't know, 30 battles. It's still a beast, frontally. I mean, it's still a tricky tank to pen. And it still has pretty dubious gun handling. But, but, to be perfectly honest with you, if you get used to the gun handling, it's actually a very effective tank. And the reason I'm showing you this replay is because not only are you going to see this tank bounce a shed load of uh, red hot ammo coming its way, but you're also going to see some of its uh, some of the times when it can be quite accurate, like about now. I mean that's quite a lengthy shot, but if you wait for that reticle to come down, then the chances of making it actually are pretty good, despite its dispersion, despite the fact that the gunner just generally doesn't want to play ball. The penetration is going to suck a little bit because I am running non-calibrated shells, but as I said, I mean, I, I don't generally suffer too much. I'm going to suffer in a moment with the, uh, with the Mark VI, but that's more to do with my aim rather than the tank. My aim is just poor. Um, that's why I'm bouncing in there. And that's that dispersion just kicking in. But then, you know, if you if you bide your time, wait it out, then you can take shots like this onto the Leo. Boom. Bye-bye. I've always liked the IS-4. It's always been a lovely tank. But when they changed the IS-7's parameters, then the IS-7 was, you know, just a better tank, generally. It had better speed, it had a better armor profile, and it generally had a better gun. But that's not to say the IS-4 is poor, because it's not. It's still a lovely tank. And if you're new to the tier and you're just getting into tier 10, then my strongest recommendation is don't go for the lights or the mediums or the TDs or the mouse or the E100. Pick an IS-4. Because, as I say, it's the most noob-friendly of all the heavies in tier 10. It's a pretty straightforward tank to roll around in. It's a pretty straightforward tank to do well in. It will teach you... Oh, look at this shot, by the way. Two says that dispersion sucks. <laughs> Even the T100 out here is like, what? How did that happen? Damn you, RNG. Because that, I mean, that, that's quite, quite a shot from the IS-4, from the back of the map all the way up there, weaving through a couple of dead tanks. So the IS-4 has always been a great tank. And as I said, if you're just coming into the tier, then you could go worse. Thing is, the IS-4 has always had the ability to bounce anything that comes its way frontally. And with the improved frontal armor, namely that driver's cabin, and the improved armor on the sides, you can actually side scrape this thing much easier than before. Okay, people are still gonna struggle in the tank. And you know, I try to sort of point out to newer players, just because you're in a heavy tank with quite a lot of HP, etc., etc. Don't think that you're invincible. 
because the gun on the ice 4 does take some getting used to but once you have got used to it oh you can make it sing and you can really have some great fun in the ice 4 you can be a real bully you can really annoy the enemy and that's the thing about these heavy tanks the is4 is designed to be on the front line now look the front line isn't yellowing in the front line is where I am now you know there's nothing between me and the enemy tank wise that's front lining it front lining it isn't me in amongst the enemy it's it's me on the front line between me and the enemy and there's nothing forward forward and a lot of people seem to misunderstand these sort of terminologies so the front line is exactly where I am at the moment now if I was just behind my IS-4 okay like the IS-7 was just then that would be the second line okay and if I was behind the IS-7 that would be the third line and if I was behind all of those that would be sitting at the back in a TD and this is the thing you need to realize guys being on the front line doesn't mean to say that you're up close and personal with the enemy it just means that there is no friendly tanks between you and the enemy tanks and this is the job that the IS-4 is perfectly suited for now you still have to have cover you still have to have a safe place to retreat to and you still have to understand how the armor on this tank works and you certainly have to understand how the gun works because the gun is well how can I say this not the best if you're a newer player now look I've been playing the IS-4 a long time and I've, I've played it in tournaments so I'm pretty pretty used to its gun and its gun handling that's why I'm experimenting at this moment in time with running it without calibrated shells and to be honest with you i'm not really struggling that much with other calibrated shells because you, you know i find the penetration is sufficiently okay as long as your aim is good enough i mean we're, we've already knocked out 3k here and we've bounced 1700 and the idea of the is4 is as i said to be that bully to royally annoy the enemy and it does that in spades it really does and you can have quite a chilled session in the is4 i mean don't get me wrong i mean you could roll out in completely pants teams and it could all go south but that's not the tank's fault that's the general strat or the team or those around you's fault i mean you could be facing a better enemy and in that case then you know it's, it's a complete and utter nightmare but again that's not necessarily the tank's fault i mean this poor chap he's gone afk i'm going to shove an he up his backside i didn't hit him for 1100 i mean that was a it was a double tap from my, my two mate in the is7 but you can see, I mean, even without the calibrated shells, the IS-4 is not struggling. We've dished out 4.1k, we've bounced 1.7, we've taken two kills. We're only going to get, I think, a third class here because the tank is just back to its former glory in real terms. I mean, it, like I said, it, it, it sort of got knocked off the pinnacle a little bit, but only ever so slightly by the IS-7. And with the recent changes, I think it's back. I think it's back to that illustrious position of being a very friendly tier 10 heavy. Oh, we got a first class. Hey, I thought it was a third. There you go. Woo, woo, woo. Always nice. And, you know, games like that put a smile on your face. Maybe it could have been a, f a mastery. I don't know. But I don't think so. I think that's just too low. Um, but, you know, you may be saying, ah, but Fuji, your enemy was pretty bad. Actually, they, they were pretty good. Um, majority of the enemy were plus 55 percent whereas the majority of my team was minus 45 percent so you know it's not all about good bad teams because even the bad teams on paper can play well and they did and sometimes the good teams on paper play pretty well badly <laughs> simple as that so this is the last game on Himmelsdorf and I really wanted to show you this replay because it really goes to show what the IS-4 can actually do and accomplish. Now, I'm not going to set the world on fire, you know, this is not an ace mastery or anything like that. It's just going to highlight that you don't need to overthink the tank, you just need to sort of play it. So already I've, I've taken the wrong flank and the, the enemy is pushing heavily over through where the A-cap would be. We're out on a limb a little bit here. 
Now, one of the enemy team, the guy in the FV4202, is a really good player. I mean, it's been like 25, 30,000 battles with a 71, 72% win rate. He's a good player. And, you know, I'm very mindful of him. So we're going to come around and we're going to flank. Now, the, the thing is, this can, you know, when you go down the flank in a heavy, it can always sort of go disastrously wrong. Thankfully, we there you go, you can just bounce 800 from the Yeager room. Now, thankfully, you know, the enemy stayed a long time around this area, which gave me time to get up here, because they could have just iron-fisted it through. You can see they've got the, they've got the tank um, superiority numbers, but um, we're, we're, we're slowly whittling them down. Now, I've got a 215B to the left of me, and I've got a 60TP to the right of me. And I want to, I tried to track the 60TP, didn't work. Trying to angle up to the 215B didn't work either. He gets a nice HE into my rear deck. And this is what I'm saying about it's a forgiving tank. So I made a, quite a few mistakes there. And I'm still alive. Because the tank is very, very forgiving. You can afford to make the odd one or two mistake. And you will get away with it. And the tank will not punish you unduly. We've now turned this game around. Not we personally, but the team. And I've got a great player in the 60TP. And I've got a good player in the Ho Re, funnily enough, well, I've got in the FV4005. It's now three against two. There's a Ho Re and the guy in the FV4202, who is, his name is exclusive, an incredibly good player. So, mindful of that. But I mean, but, uh, yeah, it, the shower got eaten there by the car. Now, I can't take on the Ho Re. Simple as that. He's, too, he's got too many hit points in a high, I've got too few. And he is frontal. I'm hoping he's going to come round. And I'm hoping that 60TP is sort of flushing him out. But at the same time, I'm also looking at the minimap and hoping our 4005 is going to get round the side of the Hovery and give him a bit of pain. And he, they're going to do that together, which is beautiful. So there we go. Hovery is now down, leaving us with the FV. Now, this, I fully admit, is a bloody lucky shot. I mean, RNG Jesus just shined on me. Boom, there we go. Whittled him down to half his hit points. Thing is, the 60TP is a one-shot. I'm a one-shot. And the FV is also looking a little bit worse for wear. So we're not in a great position, even though it may seem it because we have numerical superiority. Thing is, that guy in the FV is more than capable of wiping the three of us out without breaking into a sweat because he is that good. So we've got to play this one tentatively and carefully. Hopefully the FV is going to be baiting him a little bit. The 60 TP is going to go around the side. And I'm going to try and go... Um, now, look, I think he's going to sort of go through that corner. He takes me by surprise because he doesn't. He actually comes straight across, heading for the decap. Again, I get a little bit lucky here. I'm thinking he's going around the back, but he doesn't. And boom, manages to take him out. We end the game on 4.1k. We bounce 1.3k. And we take out you know three kills that is a nice game for me we get a first class raptor was and i was enjoying the is4 it is back to its former glory it may not have had all the nerfs reversed but what it has had has brought it back considerably well it has in my opinion anyway yeah uh, well i've been food it that has been my take on the is4 a beautiful little tier 10 heavy tank that sort of fell from grace and now is gone back to its rightful perch. By all means, comment below because those comments is what it's all about. It's what do you think of the IS-4, good or bad? I'm, I'm, I think it's gone back to where it was, which is pretty nice to be fair. And I'm, I'm liking that balance change. Anyway, as I said, I've been fooded. Until the next time, guys, remember this. Stay safe up there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because at the end of the day, really, that is what it is all about, guys. Just having fun and being happy.